Good day, everyone. This webinar is presented by Training Location, your DISC provider. My name is Bill Harshman, the president of Training Location, and I'll be hosting your session today. We're an authorized DISC distributor for Wiley Publishing, as well as a channel partner with the Ken Blanchard Companies. Thanks for your interest and for visiting our website. Our topic today is interaction between DISC styles, the S for steady with the I for influence. This session is one in a series discussing the interaction between and among four DISC styles, which include dominant, influence, steady, and conscientious. Before we begin, let's review the cornerstone principles of DISC. All DISC styles are equally valuable. Everyone is a unique blend of all four styles, and your unique style is also influenced by other factors such as your life experiences, your education, and your maturity. Let's begin by taking a look at our PACE and priority model. It is the essential tool for preliminary diagnosis, discussion, and understanding disc styles and their relationship to each other. The vertical axis represents pace, where we see the descriptors at the top and the bottom of that pace continuum. The horizontal represents priority, and we see those descriptors at the left and the right of that priority continuum. As we look at this simple grid, we can begin to make the unique pace and priority pairings into each quadrant as follows. An active pace with a task priority describes a D or dominant style. An active pace with a people priority describes an I or an influence style. A moderate pace with a people priority describes an S or a steady style. And a moderate pace with a task priority describes a C or conscientious style. Now the simple model helps to point out which styles share either pace or priority with another style. For example, the D and the I each share a spot somewhere on the top half of that pace continuum. The I and the S each have their spot somewhere on the right half of the priority continuum. The C and the S have a spot somewhere on the bottom half of the pace continuum, and the C and the D each have a spot somewhere on the left half of the priority continuum. As we focus on the S and I styles today, the model illustrates clearly the difference in pace between them. This subtle difference can require what I like to call stretching or flexing or adapting in your style. For example, there are times when a leader needs to stretch to be more directive and times when they need to stretch to be more supportive to facilitate interaction. Same is true with differing styles of DISC. Remember, we always consider pace and priority to understand a style. As shown previously, the two styles of S and I share a priority of people orientation, accepting, and warm behavior. How they differ is in their pace. The S has a more deliberate, reserved, careful pace. Those descriptors include even-tempered, accommodating, patient, humble, tactful, the S style is about providing support, maintaining stability, and encouraging collaboration. If they had a motto, it would be, let's do it together. Now, the I has a more active, faster, assertive, dynamic, maybe bold pace, uh, as described in the previous slide. When we combine the I's unique pace and priority bearings, we see refined descriptors such as enthusiastic, optimistic, high-spirited, lively and social. The I style tends to be about focusing on the positive, expressing enthusiasm, taking quick action and encouraging collaboration. If they had a motto, it would be let's have fun. Now what might help us understand the previous descriptors is to understand a little bit more about what drives these styles. Wiley research indicates the following core themes or needs of the two styles. Let's look first at the core needs of the S. The S is real simple. It's got one core need and it's a need for harmony. Specifically, that is to know that things are running smoothly and evenly, no looming tension or pressure building up or danger on the horizon. They wanna know there's harmony in both their relationships and their tasks. Remember the S is all about support, stability, and collaboration from our last slide. 
Now, this need for harmony in this can result in a bias to give other people benefit of the doubt, and it can result in a powerful desire to avoid conflict and the things that create conflict. So compare these with the need of or needs of an I. There's a need for connection. Now, this may translate to responding negatively to a threat of that connection. There's a need for expression. That is to say, a need to externalize the thoughts and emotions in the brain and to get the ideas out and get them heard and acknowledged by another person. They love getting lost in a good conversation. There's a need for stimulation. They are tuned in to the rewards that an environment has to offer. And they have a need to be wanted. Sometimes this can translate to the I not wanting to be opened up to regret for something they may have said or done. Now, to further help clarify these styles, let's look at what their fears are, respectively. The S fears loss of stability, change, especially rapid change, loss of harmony, and a fear of offending others. Remember, they go back to that stable status quo, want everything to be aligned um, perspective. The I fear, I fears include social rejection, disapproval, loss of influence, and being ignored. Now, you can start to understand how if S's are interacting with an I, you can imagine how, let's say, the S's need for harmony coupled with a fear of change and loss of stability, if that were to meet up with the eye's need for expression and quick action, stimulation, <clears throat> not, <clears throat> not a problem necessarily, but it could present a challenge for the unaware. At a minimum, there's a need for that stretching that I talked about from both sides, as uh, we discussed earlier. Now, as an S, what have we learned about interaction with an eye as far as being more effective? Well, let the eye know that you appreciate teamwork as much as they do. Speak up when you're concerned about how plans affect other people and recognize the value of the eye's enthusiasm and their high energy. What about when it comes to solving problems? Temper your shared optimism by considering all potential issues and show the eye that you're open to creative solutions and share your doubts rather than just going along with their ideas to make them happy. And the last is the area of managing tension. Acknowledge everyone's feelings, but don't sidestep issues. Avoid concealing your own needs because that can lead to your resentment later on down the road. And let the eye know that working through disagreement will improve the relationship. Some of you probably noticed last week in our vlog that we expanded our discussion to show how a style within a quadrant can really vary quite a bit. That's to say there might be a different types of S in the S quadrant. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go back into that this week. And I've included the everything disc model for your reference in the upper right hand corner of our slide right now. I encourage you to check out our website blog and look up interaction between styles S with D or I with C. They have a good perspective and a good review of that more detailed approach that I just mentioned. So here's our model again to help remind you where the S and the I styles fit into our grid. Today we discuss two individuals who are both accepting and warm and people oriented and yet who are dissimilar on the pace spectrum between active and outgoing and reflective and reserved. And that the caution here is lumping individuals into a style box, if you will, can really overlook what's behind that style and what's inside that person. I'd love it for you to share this webinar with your personal and professional connections with a different topic every week. Many of my customers and clients are using these webinars as learning aids and boosters to help grow DISC culture within their organization. I hope this has been helpful and addresses the challenge faced by your organization, whether your needs include employee engagement, conflict management, team building, or simply communication, DISC is the research-based proven leading training solution. It's impacted more than 8 million learners in over 130,000 organizations and through 14 languages in over 70 countries worldwide. And remember, quick note. 
DISC provides a quick, intuitive way to understand yourself and the needs of and priorities of others and the people around you. And it delivers immediate and lasting impact on the performance of people and the culture of organizations. If you take away nothing else from this webinar today, please take away those two points. They'll come in handy someday for you. And as always, I keep repeating, the key to effectiveness through DISC is understanding your and others' styles, then using that knowledge for improved interactions. Thanks for joining us today. Here's our contact info. Meanwhile, good luck with the DISC. Now, I hope this has been helpful, relevant, and timely, and most importantly, valuable. And I'd like to see you on future webinar. If you'd like to discuss a complimentary live webinar introducing DISC to your team or organization, use the email shown info at traininglocation.com. And be sure to check out our other blogs at the web address shown, or simply go to our website, traininglocation.com, and click on blogs. And before you close your screen, we always appreciate your like or share or download of our products. And of course, for future learning videos, please hit subscribe and receive your weekly bell alert for a new video. Thanks very much for joining today and goodbye until next time.